Um, this session is called Making Security Make Sense to Users and Clients. Um, so I first I have a question for everybody. Um, how many of you are actively building sites for clients? Okay, good. How many of you have your clients on monthly care or maintenance update programs? Awesome. Okay, so the intention of this talk is to provide useful tips for helping to grow your business and your monthly revenue by including security in your client projects and in your maintenance plans, and more specifically, how to make users and clients understand the importance of security uh, and why it matters. So my name is Adam Warner. I am uh, the open source community manager for uh, SiteLock, and I'm all these other things. And if you know what 42 is, come see me and we'll have a chat. Uh, so what we're going to cover today is securing your own sites, securing your client sites, the benefits for your business and those of your clients communicating security benefits efficiently, uh, including security in the project scope, and the kind of the core of this with the clients is the communication and the security best practices, maintenance programs, pricing and reporting options. So first I want to talk about the benefits of securing your own site, right? It's, it's kind of a, a foregone conclusion. Everybody knows that's important, but if you're providing sites for clients, um, it becomes especially important because your reputation can be affected if your site isn't uh, secure, if you're not taking steps. So website hacks happen all the time, every day. I'll talk more about the why and the how of that in a little bit. But if your site gets hacked, and I'm Googling uh, Portland, Maine web development or Portland, Maine web design, and I see your brand, and I go to your site, and Chrome tells me that the site may not be safe, or I see links to Viagra or other pharmacy uh, shops, I'm immediately going to associate your brand with a negative connotation, I'm going to leave, and I'm going to tell my friends about it probably, other business owners, other people who need sites. So it's really important to protect your own site first because of that reputation, but also so you become familiar with security best practices. Uh, I like to say now, tongue in cheek, that I'd never recommend uh, something to my clients that I haven't used myself. Uh, but Really what I mean is I will never do that again, right? So uh, if you're using any kind of security plugin or product or uh, cloud-based uh, security, you are going to be familiar with what it is you're recommending to your clients, the pros and cons of, of all of that. So I really strongly suggest eating our own dog food uh, to become familiar, as familiar as you can, so when you start this conversation about security with your clients, um, it's obvious that you'll know that they will know what you're talking about. And also, it's about protecting your business. <clears throat> if your site is hacked, especially if you're selling any kind of product or depending on any kind of revenue from your site on a daily basis, if you suffer a hack and let's say you get it cleaned up in 24 hours, you still lost a day of, of <coughs> revenue. And this is especially um, near and dear to my heart because I had a business that was ruined by a security uh, hack. Uh, back in 2006, 2007, I started a company called Indie Lab and I used WordPress multi-site. Does anybody not know what multi-site is? I can quickly explain. Everybody knows what multi-site is? So people can come and sign up for free sites. So it was uh, geared toward artists of, of all kinds to give them free blogs uh, and websites and then I started to uh, upsell them on different features that you could turn on with a network activated plugin, that sort of thing. And I started to make a pretty good revenue. Uh, I was working full time at the time. I was about two weeks away from putting in my two week notice because I was earning enough monthly uh, that I thought, hey, I'm an internet, internet entrepreneur and I've done this. And look at me and my chest was out. And then one morning I woke up to a bunch of emails hundreds of emails from hundreds of different users of my platform asking why I had put Viagra ads uh, in their content. <clears throat> Obviously, I hadn't done that. Uh, so I jumped on to the forums at the time, the multi-site forums, because it was before it was in, uh, included in WordPress core. It was a different um, uh, download. And I started to get help 
from a couple of people named Andrea and Ron Rennick out of Canada. They were giving me tips on what to do, how to clean up the hack, because I couldn't go to some service and just say, can you clean this up, because it didn't exist. So that went on for a few days. I fixed things. Everything was hunky-dory. Replied to all the emails. Sorry for the trouble. Here's a free month of services. And then it happened again. And then it happened again, because there were back doors on the server that that I couldn't find, that no one else was finding. And I didn't know enough about website security. It was my first ever experience with website security and hacks, and I just didn't know anything. So I ended up just shutting down the business, because again, I was working full time, had family to take care of, and the stress was uh, overwhelming. I refunded everybody's money, and then I got depressed. Not clinically depressed, but pretty down in the dumps uh, that I had failed, right? So it's about protecting your business becoming familiar with security. So the benefits of securing your client sites. I know they're pretty obvious one, right? So <clears throat> how many of you are actively in implementing basic security when you build a client site? Plugins or otherwise? <clears throat> That's good. So securing your client sites is in your best interest, right? Um, have any, has anyone here ever received a, a frantic email or a phone call on a Saturday night at 11 o'clock? I'm sure we all have, right? Um, it's in your best interest to not get those kind of contacts from your clients um, in order to find that work-life balance that we probably as internet people all struggle with at some point, right? Now, imagine that email says my site is hacked, my site is redirecting to uh, adult sites, it's our responsibility as the website provider, as the technical provider, to fix whatever problem that they're experiencing, right? So uh, if we do that proactively as much as we can uh, before we hand over a site, it'll be better for everybody. And it'll give you peace of mind, it'll give your clients peace of mind. So <clears throat> let's get into how you do that. How do you secure a client site? How do you make them understand it's important? And how do you use that to uh, increase your monthly revenue? It's all about education. Educating the clients on security. What it is, what the threats are, without being, uh, um, what's the word? Without being a fear monger, mongerer. <clears throat> it's about education, but more importantly, it's also about spreading awareness. Making the internet a safer place for everybody. Right? How often do we, on the news, hear a story of some major hack? Right? Equifax, Facebook, millions and millions of people are affected. <clears throat> so, in my mind, security is not just the right thing to do, it's also the right thing to do for the internet as a whole. So, just like walking through uh, a city alone at night, having a, a, an awareness every day of internet security and our, with our personal information is super important. So, <clears throat> who's responsible for security? You, the client, or the web host? Anybody? Want to? Three. All three, three. exactly. To, to varying degrees, right? So, this is the analogy we like to use um, at work, um, which helps people kind of put all that stuff in perspective because if you go on to any Facebook group or anywhere online and say, what's the best web host? You're going to get an answer for every single web host that exists out there. And in those answers, you're going to hear people say, this host is insecure. This host purposely hacked my site so they could sell me on you know, uh, security from, from whatever they do. But, but the, the short answer is that it is all three people. So you can think of a web host as an apartment complex, right? So they own the property. They own all of the individual buildings within that complex. So a host is primarily responsible for the security of their network, of all those servers in their complex. It's in their best interest to keep that complex <coughs> safe, right? The application level, WordPress, or any other platform that you install on one of those servers, is the responsibility of you as a website provider but ultimately, your client, the, the website owner. So the host 
make sure that the lights or parking lot lights are on, the snow is shoveled, the sidewalks are clear, and then as the developer, we are the ones building the buildings. <clears throat> we have to make sure in terms of setting the site up for security success, we have to make sure that we, um, that we are doing all the wiring right, that we're putting up the, the plaster in the way that it's supposed to be done, we're following codes, and then the website owner is the one that when they leave that individual apartment in that building, in that complex, that they have to lock their door. They have to close their windows. So just like a brick and mortar store, an owner wouldn't uh, be done for the day and just walk away and leave the door open and the windows open, right? You have to secure uh, your website as it, as it, just like it's your home. So setting your business apart. <clears throat> Educating your clients on security, let me back up. So that analogy is something that you can start to use in your conversation with your clients, right? And so when do you start talking about security with your clients? From the very first email, the very first phone call, mention that that is part of your core value in your business is to create sites that are not only uh, 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 designed to grow their business, but also uh, to secure that business along the way. So you can start to set yourself apart by talking about that. So if I'm going to three different agencies and asking, you know, for quotes on things, the one that talks about security, the one that talks to me about being a partner in the growth of my business, to me personally, is the one that's going to get more of my attention rather than just giving me a, a quote on a bill. So, you can expand that, uh, that initial conversation into educating them about website security um, as it pertains to their business, um, and I'll show you how to do that. <clears throat> the last benefit of educating your clients presents um, additional revenue opportunities, right? So you can demand higher prices if you're setting yourself apart by talking about security. Well, uh, agency B wants to charge me ten grand, but you want to charge me eighteen thousand or twenty-five thousand? Why? You're providing the same line items, but my line item, line item has security in it, and because we are experts at security, that's one of our focuses. So you can demand higher prices when you start to set yourself apart, and of course, the residual income comes in the form of the maintenance plan when you include security as a line item there. So the benefits of communicating the need for security effectively. This is uh, kind of the core information I want to share with you today. Um, many, if not most clients, have an adverse reaction when we mention security. We were talking about this earlier. So when you talk to someone, a new client or, or a distant client that you want to, uh, that includes security, they're going to have one of two reactions. They're going to say, wait a minute, my cat blog is not important enough. Why would anybody want to hack it? I don't need security. Or they're going to say, security <laughs> is way too technical. My eyes are glazing over. I don't even want to know about it. I'll just deal with it when it happens. So how do you communicate to those people that security is important for everybody? One of the ways to do that is to communicate three things. So you can break down website security into some basic questions. Then it's much easier for people who are non-technical to understand what it is, why it's important. First, you explain the why, why websites get hacked. <clears throat> Most websites are not targeted for hacking. Uh, there's a few exceptions. We had a presidential election in 2016 and one of the candidate sites was definitely targeted for hacking. Um, it was a a matter of putting in a special string of characters in the URL and you can change the slogan uh, on the main page. Uh, there are a lot of examples of that. If you do some Googling, one of the most tame was I like turtles, but there were some that were a little nastier than that. Um, so that is a targeted uh, hack, but most hacks are automated. Tell your client that most hacks are automated because it's true. They're from automated scripts and bots. And it's not a matter of some really uh, a, a smart man or woman that is sitting down writing new scripts every day. It's a few people who do that, but then 
what are known as script kiddies, or people who want to be hackers, go and download these scripts, and then they change a few things, and then they release them out in the wild. So, why do automated scripts happen? Why do website hacks happen? <clears throat> Sometimes it's a religious or political ideology, but by and large, the majority of hacks happen because you know, there's some kind of financial gain. So, as an example, this is something you can share on why websites get hacked and why your catalog is still susceptible. One, because every internet, every website on the internet <clears throat> is a target for an automated bot. The financial part comes in when I sign up for some service which pays me half a penny or a penny per click. Not per conversion, but per click. And then I write a script that has my affiliate ID and I search and find a way in, excuse me, and I get one, I compromise one website. And then that <clears throat> allows me to compromise five websites, a hundred, a thousand, a hundred thousand. Now imagine how much money I'm making from this automated script on affiliate commissions until someone gets wise and shuts me down. <clears throat> That's why, it's about money. And it's also about information, personal information. That, that is something that we all know, right? People want um, our identities, people want our social security numbers in order to commit fraud. But by and large, it's all financial. So who is hacking and how are they hacking? Well, I just covered kind of some of that. Uh, it's not the stereotypical um, angsty teen in a, in a hoodie in their parents' basement, you know. It's, it's people who want to take shortcuts, who want to make money the easy way, or they want some kind of 15 minutes of fame to be able to tell them tell other people and their friends that they're a hacker, right? <clears throat> so website compromises happen in a bunch of different ways. <clears throat> and to put it simply, hacks, automated scripts, even if it's someone manually targeting you, they're looking for an open door. And an open door can come in the form of, uh, of weak passwords. Uh, it can come in the form of outdated software. Um, there's all kinds of ways that uh, people can get in. So I mentioned this before, when did hacks happen? This is just a quick GIF of a security company called Norse. Uh, and this is a real-time uh, picture of, uh, of hacks. Now some of these are state players, uh, but many of these are automated bots. So. When you're educating your clients about why hacks happen, you've made the analogy of why it's your responsibility as a web host and, and how you are there to partner with them and help them, um, then you can get into this. These five simple website security best practices. It is pretty simple once you, once you break it down how to secure a site. Now, I want to back up just a little bit. I should have started this whole session with there is no such thing as 100% security. Not in life, not when you're walking down the street, and not on websites. There just isn't. But what you're doing is you're looking at this big attack radius and you're trying to reduce it. You're trying to reduce the chances that something bad will happen. So number one are backups. We probably all know this if we've been building sites for a while. Backups are super important. You want to back up your database and your files at least weekly, um, probably daily if you have a larger site. And what's important with backups is that you don't store the backup on the same server that your website lives on, because if your site gets hacked, so do your backups. Uh, so you want to store that off-site, Amazon S3, Dropbox, Google Drive, something like that. And you also, if you are managing a, a, a I would say, not for a catalog, but for an e-commerce site that's uh, making a good amount of revenue, you'll probably want to test those backups as well on some secure environment, some staging environment, uh, to make sure that if something bad happens, then you're not reinstalling a, uh, a database or, or the files that have already been hacked. Right? So if something bad happens, test those backups, keep them for a while. Number two, updates. This is also probably something that you're all very familiar with. Updating WordPress core is super important. Updating your plugins is super important. And updating your themes is super important. But I also want to talk about shiny object syndrome for a second, because I have it. 
Uh, when I go into the control panel of uh, any number of my sites, I like to look through all the software applications that are there. I especially like to look at new stuff that like Fantastico and other services put in there, and I install it on my server to play with it. And then what happens? It, I forget about it, and it's still software that's sitting on my server. Right? That probably, there's not, not a lot of them that have the same software update mechanisms that WordPress has. So it's sitting there on my server. It's code. It's exposed. It probably won't get updated. So if there's anything that you're, that's on your server that is not directly related to the site uh, of, your, of yours or your clients, get rid of it. And that includes unused plugins as well. Um, if you deactivate a plugin, uh, that code is still in a directory on your server and it may not be updated. So updating all the software that you use is important. Um, and we've all heard of the, the Equifax hack, right, that I mentioned. Um, that was due to outdated server software in part that they knew about four months prior to the hack happening. It wasn't updated. It could have been patched. Could have saved 143 million people's information from getting hacked or potentially. Number three, strong passwords and unique passwords. If you have your laptop open, I I really suggest going to have I been pwned or pawned, uh, dot com forward slash passwords. This is a site by a guy named Tony Hunt. He is a security um, analyst from Microsoft. And what you'll do when you go there is you'll put in a password that you use regularly and then it'll tell you that this password has been seen two times before in a previous data breach. That's pretty cool. Um, but it's not cool because this actually was a password that I used to reuse. Um, but it is cool because now I don't use that password anymore anywhere. Um, and this service, there are actually plugins uh, in the repo now. Uh, if you search um, uh, phone passwords, I believe, in the repo, someone uh, there's probably two or three of them now. Um, when you're signing up new users for your WordPress site, it'll check against uh, this guy's database. So, strong and unique passwords. <clears throat> and then you tell your clients that. You tell your non-technical client that you need a strong and unique password for every single login. For their home Wi-Fi, for their local machine, for their WordPress site, for uh, any login that they have. Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is. And they're going to look at you and go, no, I'm not going to do that. Because how do, how do we keep track of strong passwords? and you need passwords for every site. And if you're into passwords, or if you've been on the internet for any length of time, uh, you're probably aware of password managers. So there are several really great password managers. They're specifically designed to create strong passwords and allow you to, to save and organize all of those logins. LastPass is a really good one. One Password is good. Uh, Dashlane is good. And KeyPass. Uh, is also good. It's, I think I think KeePass is uh, open source as well. So now, if you're thinking ahead, now you're going to go. Well, what happens if that password service gets hacked? Reducing the radius. Password services, both one password and LastPass, have been hacked before. But I'd rather put my information in the hands who's, of someone whose core business is security, is password management, because I feel better knowing that if something happens, that they're going to move as quick as they can to mitigate the risk. Okay? But again, 100% security, it's not possible. Firewalls and CDNs. Um, if you aren't familiar with what a firewall is, there's two types of firewalls. There is a, um, a network firewall and a web application firewall. And a network firewall is designed and primarily used by hosts to protect the traffic that moves between the servers in their network. A web application firewall is what I always suggest that you include as uh, part of your client build. Uh, and a web application firewall is really designed to protect uh, the application level, WordPress as the application. So what happens is when uh, Sally over here 
loads her browser and requests this domain over here on this web server, that request goes through a web application firewall first. It's a hardware and software solution because it's designed to uh, identify malicious traffic before it gets to the web server. So if you think about automated malware and malicious scripts, they get stopped before they even get to the web server to do uh, to do any damage or to look for uh, vulnerabilities on your website. So, super important, I think, web application firewall is probably, I should probably move that up to number one or two, uh, because when I um, first started using a WAF, as it's known, WAF, um, before that I thought I was a bit, uh, a bit more popular uh, than I found out I was, because when I saw the traffic drop and saw how much traffic my, uh, my analytics and other tools were picking up, it was a lot of automated script traffic. Uh, CDN is a content delivery network. Uh, CDNs are designed not primarily for security, although they include some level of security by default. Uh, CDN uh, is basically a copy of your site or your client's site that is distributed on different servers all throughout the world, and they're designed to reduce latency when someone from Ireland is loading your site, they're going to hit a server or a copy of that site in Ireland rather than going all the way to Chicago to get to it. So the mix of firewalls and CDNs uh, are pretty good at uh, reducing uh, automated malicious traffic. And number five of the simple website security tips is continuous monitoring. Uh, you want to have some kind of a regular website security scanner. And there's different types of scanners. There's uh, scanners that scan your site looking at it as a browser would, so from the outside in. There's scanners which that you can connect to your um, server via FTP or SSH that will scan the actual files on your server looking for malicious software uh, and other hacks. But some kind of continuous monitoring. So uh, if you just Google uh, security scanner, you're going to find a bunch of different options out there. And, and there's, there's no one that's better than the other because I don't know the technical aspects of each one, but as long as you're doing some kind of continuous monitoring, um, you can be alerted to anything bad that might be happening on the site. So, including security in the project scope. Um, again, this, this goes right back to talking about security from the very beginning, right? The, the first email, the first phone call, you can also continue that conversation of that education you've given if you include security as a line item in the project scope process. It gives you a more professional image, in my opinion, that you are then continuing that conversation, you're, 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 you're positioning yourself as um, someone who cares about security, but also you're building trust with your client because they will, by default, through this process, know that you actually um, give a damn about their business, right? You're not just there to take their money and then send them on their way. You are there to grow their business, which then will grow yours. So it's about building trust as well. Um, you could also include security as a service. Um, as I mentioned earlier, focusing on security from the first contact and then in the project scope, um, but you can also offer it into your maintenance plans, as I mentioned. Um, so it looked like a number of you are doing monthly care plans for your clients. If you're not, I highly recommend um, offering that service to your existing clients and your new clients. And what maintenance plans mean, practically, it's pretty simple for us to do. We go in and push buttons. Update core, update plugins, update themes. Until one of them breaks when you push the button. Well, that's true. You have to make sure you mitigate that risk as well. Uh, update always on the staging site, right? Uh, so maintenance plan. You can also offer security as an add-on service. So what if a, a client's budget simply just doesn't allow for um, any kind of maintenance plan? Whether it's two fifty a month or hundred bucks a month, they just can't pay it. They're starting out. Um, you can offer uh, one-time security services. So uh, maybe their site was hacked. Maybe it is a catalog, and they come to you and go, "Hey, can you fix this?" Then you can uh, you can use a service to clean it up uh, and then charge them with an extra percentage. So you can do a one-time hack. You can do a, a one-time hack cleanup, excuse me. Um, you can do a one-time monitoring 
uh, or scanning for them to give them maybe a, a report every six months, uh, every month. Um, you can set up the web application firewall for them if they've decided that that's important to them and they're paying for that through uh, uh, Cloudflare or whatever other service. Uh, you can be the technical person. <coughs> So there's a couple of ways to automate the maintenance and reporting, and if you're already doing that, possibly you already are using some of the tools that I'm going to uh, show you here. Um, the first one is Manage WP, and if you're not familiar with Manage WP, it's bas basically a unified dashboard where you can connect uh, multiple individual single WordPress installations, and you get a really good overview, so in terms of client work. I've got 50 clients, I can see every single site on there, I can see what site has what software updates, and then I can bulk update WordPress core, I can bulk update plugins, I can bulk update themes. Manage WP also comes with some security scanning uh, included, and what's really cool about that service and others like Infinite WP and uh, this one, Watchful, Watchful, the, the URL, um, they all come with uh, some reporting included uh, and then if you pay whatever cost you can brand that reporting so you can automate this whole maintenance system for your clients where you're going in you're literally spending an hour every month and let's say you have 50 clients and you're charging them a hundred bucks a piece it's pretty easy money but it's also a really good way to make sure that your client sites are as protected as they can be so let's talk about the benefits of a summary of a presentation. Um, so if I'd like you to just try and remember these things to grow your business. Um, these are the bullet points. Secure your own site first, build that, that trust. Uh, make sure that that image is professional. Make sure that you're not pushing clients away uh, by mistake uh, from their very first visit. Learn the why, how, who, and when of website security. And that is basically um, why websites get hacked, who's hacking them, and why um, Sally and Bob's, again, their cat blog are being targeted, right? Communicate the business benefits effectively, and that is talking to your clients about security in terms that they understand that their business um, really depends on that portal. It's like a brick and mortar store, it just happens to be on the internet. Include that talk of security from the beginning all the way through to the project scope, and if it doesn't work out for maintenance plans, you can offer it as an optional service. And I didn't mention this, but you can even offer security as a required service uh, or a requirement to work with. That's another way to set yourself apart. You might lose a few clients, but you're going to make uh, a higher, uh, you're going to be able to demand higher project costs. And then finally, automate that maintenance and reporting as much as you can to save you time so you can more clients. So that's what I have for you today. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes, ma'am. So when I have the conversation with my clients about security um, and old groups and other websites I work, I, I specialize in WordPress, so mm -hmm. I don't even do the other websites anymore. So um, that HTML stuff. <laughs> what was it? PHP. Anyways. Um, so I have that conversation with them and then they go, oh, I don't want to have my website in WordPress then. So I don't have a good counter argument to why you wouldn't want to have a website the other way except for, well, then you wouldn't be able to update the content. So, so are you, what are other people using as an argument? Are you saying that the, because the clients have, have heard that WordPress is insecure or that there's something wrong with it? Well, yeah. the, what I communicate to, to people who have that opinion is that um, it does power over 30% of all sites on the internet, and there's a reason for that. And because it powers so many sites, it's an obvious target, right? Just like Equifax is a target for personal information, um, it's something that's unavoidable, but the good part of that, that I try to explain, is that because it's so popular, there's so many thousands of people around the world focused on and depending on the software, uh, that there's businesses uh, that are, exist to make sure that your site is secure, right? So WordPress isn't less secure than anything else. WordPress isn't less secure than um, uh, a hosted service like Wix or Squarespace, right? Or Drupal or Joomla. It's just 
so Google hot. Google is actually the number two act. It's, it's the go. number two secure, security vulnerability of all the CMS. Right. So the, the, the point is, and what I try to, to communicate is that if, if they think WordPress is more insecure than anything else, I try to let them know that it's just, just not the truth. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. You have a question, sir? Yeah, you were talk, you're talking about automating the um, maintenance portion <laughs> and the updates. I'm curious how much um, how much do you automate the updating of, of plugins, for example? I understand WordPress 4 can be automated pretty easily to update. Are you still going in and physically hitting update on uh, for, the, for the plugins, either via a different portal <coughs> or on the website uh, install itself? For the remaining clients that I have, and I only have about five or six left because I don't do client work anymore, I go into Manage WP every week, every Saturday morning, and I look for whatever updates there are. And whether it's core or plugins, I'm doing that every week. But so you are actually physically like you're updating. You're not using a script or a service no, that no. will run the update right. automatically on some sort of you know, fixed interval or whatever. Right. I'm actually going in and pressing the button. And and for I was confused on what you were asking because WordPress you can automate the core uh, software updates where you don't have to push a button. Uh, but plugins I'm going in and physically doing that. Yes. Going in and physically doing them in each website. Well, I use Manage WP for doing that. But, right. but I could go but to one website at a time. Because when you mentioned doing forty at a time, I'm like, oh my god. No, no, like, I do it in bulk. Yeah. In bulk, really? I, I tick all the things I want updated or check all, and I press a button and I wait, and then I go look at those <coughs> sites. And then I go look. At, well, first I run backups. Yeah. Uh, and then I look at those sites and make sure they're not broken. And then he has this quick look, restore, yeah. and boom. Because right. you you current backup okay. whatever, so you yeah. can do that. Any other questions? Can you go back to the slide um, for the passwords? <coughs> yeah. Uh, back to the slide for the passwords. The one, yeah, that. Right there. The one right before that. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, I'll be around the rest of the day. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming to my session. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. You have a question about this site. Now, how, do we, how, how do we know you can trust that? <laughs> Yeah, I don't okay. know if I want to look at the attack rate. Well, he could be collecting passwords from everybody. There's a text file out yes. there that has so many millions. I just checked the passwords. When the hacks happen? Well, yes, yes, I'm sorry, I didn't make that point clear. When the website hacks happen? Every second of the day, every day, all year long. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you know if there's any statistics around hacks? And WordPress versus non-WordPress. I don't know that. No, I don't know that. The uh, I know W three text is it? They they're the ones that come out with a report about the usage. Yeah, you can find Yeah, it's probably probably around there. Or built 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 with is another service where you can kind of mine the data that might yeah, I like the scratch. Okay, it might be something in there. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. I appreciate it.